I'm Teresa from Southern Biological. Today I'm demonstrating the inhibition of microbial growth. This is a great prep for teaching your students the basics of aseptic technique and also for demonstrating the action of antibiotics against bacteria. For this prep, you will need two nutrient agar plates per student. I've got four because I'm going to teach you two different techniques. Your bacteria, a sterile pipette, a sterile spreader, or conversely, we have a glass spreader if you prefer to use that. The other technique uses a sterile swab. The antibiotic discs, and they can be taken out using either an ejector pack or a flamed forceps. First, we're gonna start with sterilizing our work area. I have a Bunsen burner here that I can't put on today, but we can use our imagination. I've got an autoclavable bag for waste. I've got 70% alcohol disposable gloves and my safety glasses. Make sure the students wipe down their benches with the, with the alcohol before putting on the Bunsen burner because obviously alcohol is flammable. You may prefer to use a, a spray bottle for the, for the alcohol. It makes it a bit easier. The first technique I'll show you is using pipette and spreader. We'll work in the vicinity of the flame to take advantage of the updraft that the heat provides to stop any potential contaminants from dropping into our work. Take your bacteria next to the flame, open it up and quickly pass it through the flame. Take your sterile pipette. And you want about a quarter of a million, you only need a few drops of this because it goes a long way. And pop it onto your plate and then use the spreader to pass to make a nice, even lawn. Make a lawn on your control plate in exactly the same way. The second technique I'm going to show you is using a sterile swab. It can be a bit more difficult to get a nice, even lawn, but you use slightly less bacteria, so that might be preferable for some schools. Take your bacteria, pass it through the Bunsen burner flame, Open your swab, dip it into the culture, get it nice and, and wet. Remember to put the lid on once you've done with it to stop any contamination. Open the lid of your Petri dish again towards the flame and rub it as evenly as you can across the agar plate. There are two methods to apply your antibiotic discs. First, I'll demonstrate the use of the ejector pack. Pop your tube of discs into the pack and listen to it snap. I've got chloramphenicol here, so I'm gonna put it into the segment mark C. Just click that through and pop your apple. The second method is with the use of forceps. Now between each use, we'll pass it through the Bunsen burner flame to just make sure there's no contamination between each. Here I have chloramphenicol. So I'm just gonna pull out one of these chloramphenicol discs and pop it in the segment mark C. And just tap lightly down so that it stays on. Now that we have our plates all inoculated and with antibiotics in them, we will turn them upside down and they will be incubated for 24 hours at 37 degrees Celsius. There is a temptation to incubate at a lower temperature, but it is actually safer to do it at 37 degrees because the faster your E. coli grows, the less time you've got for possibly pathogenic contaminants to also grow. It's been 24 hours since we put our plates into the incubator at 37 degrees. We now have ourselves a nice lawn of E. coli and around some of our antibiotics, we've got a clear circle. That's the zone of inhibition, which means that the antibiotic has worked against the bacteria. Against penicillin and the blank one, there's no zone of inhibition, and that means that penicillin does not work. All we need to do now is measure those zones of inhibition and write them down in our results sheet. Just a quick word about the reason for this control plate, even though we've got a blank disc on this one. If it so happens that you have no growth on your experiment plate, 
it might be that something went wrong with the growing or it might be that the antibiotics were really good and just killed absolutely everything. In this case, that's where you go to your control. If there's growth on here, then it's the antibiotics killed it on here. And if there's not, then something went wrong in your cultivation. Just a quick note too about the bacteria you've used. If you're going to use Staphylococcus epidermidis or Staph epi if you prefer, you will need 48 hours uh, incubation time. At the end of your class, remember to clean up your bench again with alcohol. You don't want to leave any nasty surprises for the next person to use it. And this concludes our experiment. Thank you for watching. For more information, explore our website or feel free to give us a call.